Today we'll be exploring Lydian augmented from a compositional point of view, as in not to improvise or jam solos over chords with, it's essentially to write an accessible pop song within that mode, within that scale. Lydian augmented is the answer to the question, what if we tried to make Lydian a bit brighter? And failed. Miserably, because it's too bright, it's too much, it hurts, it's uncomfortable. From the major scale, we'll be in C today, you get Lydian augmented by sharping the fourth and the fifth degree of the scale. This is what you get. The chords, as in triads, you can build on each scale degree are as follows. Augmented one, major two, major three, sharp four diminished, sharp five diminished, minor six, minor seven, and back to augmented one. So the tonic chord is an augmented triad. It's in C augmented. And we get two other bonus augmented triads because an augmented chord, when you invert it, it's still an augmented chord from that root. Essentially we get C augmented, E augmented, then G sharp augmented. It's three different chords and the same chord all at once. As in they comprise of all the same notes, except in different inversions. Now, to me, an augmented triad is even more dissonant than a diminished triad. I mean, look, you could strum a major chord just fine. Sounds good. A minor chord is also pretty good. It's nice. A diminished chord? It's okay, it's pretty good. I mean, you can strum it, it's tense. You can make it a bit smoother by making it a half diminished. Even a full diminished is okay. But an augmented triad? If you play this, people are gonna think you don't know how to play guitar and you're just like picking up a guitar and playing random notes like you don't know what the hell you're doing. I mean, when I was composing this song, my girlfriend turned around and she says, is your guitar okay? Is it in tune? Are you okay? What are you doing? I mean, she thought I was just like strumming random notes. <laughs> like a madman. Therein lies the problem with modes and scale that have a dissonant tonic chord. Be it diminished or augmented, these chords never sound resolved. You always want to go somewhere else, anywhere but here. They're full of tension. <sighs> so you have to relieve that tension, but if you stay there, it's just very tense and hardcore to to live in. In that sense, that's the power of those chords. It's that tension, that want to go somewhere, that propulses your song somewhere else. There are also amazing pivot chords to move between different keys, but that's something else for another time. Right now we're stuck here. A trick to write songs in these modes is to stick to the tonic, as in you don't move away from the home chord, you just stay there for the whole song. Soon you'll really recall that I am done with you. I mean, that works since we never left home. We never really question why that tension is there. We just get used to it like a loud AC unit blasting in the background. But this feels too easy. We're not going to do that today. We're going to move around. We're going to venture outside the tonic. Let's go on a journey. To acclimate our ear to the sound of this mode, what Rick Beato called the dark side of major, we're going to start with C Ionian, that's in plain old vanilla C. And we'll slowly rise the temperature to make our way back to Lydian augmented, like rising the temperature of water to boil a frog alive. Side note, that's not true, that's apocryphal. The frogs in the experiment that stayed in the water while the water slowly boiled had their brains removed. I mean, they did the same thing with frogs that had brains and they jumped out of the water at about 25 degrees Celsius or 77 Fahrenheit. If I had my brain scooped out, I think I'd be a bit passive too. No frogs were harmed in this video. 
All right, back to C major. The chords in C major are major one, minor two, minor three, major four, major five, minor six, diminished seven, back to major one. Ooh, that's nice. Now the chord progression we're gonna use is one, six, seven, two sus four, two, one. Now that sus four is essentially to have a nice movement towards the tonic to resolve nicely. Now in C Ionian, I'm going to swap that seven diminished chord with G in second inversion. That means the root will be B. That's gonna give us sort of a nicer, smoother seventh degree chord. As a note, when you transform a song into different scales, into different modes, you'll usually have to swap certain chords and certain notes to make it more musical, as in to cater to the tendencies of that particular mode. Uh, it's not just a matter of just sharpening all the fours and just you're done with it. You have to use your ear and figure out the little intricacies of every mode. That's the fun part. So here's what it sounds like with the melody also transformed into C Ionian. So Let's take the first step into our journey. Let's sharp that four, which gives us C Lydian. Now the chords in C Lydian are major one, major two, minor three, sharp four diminished, major five, minor six, minor seven, back to major one. So our chord progression becomes C, A minor, B minor, D sus4, D, back to C. This time we won't be using G in its second inversion as, a, as the seven chord. We're just going to be using the plain old seven chord, which is B minor. So sound is a bit brighter but it's still a bit edgier because that sharp four right now is like ugh, poking us a little bit sometimes I won't take it. now let's take our final step into deep brightness let's sharp that five the scale becomes creepy like that old man with the hat and poltergeist he's smiling but something ain't right Now the chord progression becomes C augmented, A minor, B minor, D sus4, D, back to C augmented. All right, this is what it sounds like. So purposefully forced resolved it in C augmented like hammering the wrong puzzle piece in place and calling it done doesn't that C augmented sound like a question I mean I could say something like 
I decided to end the song with a question because life is a question. It is absurd. You never get what you want and then you die. But instead, I went another route. In my experience, when you write a melody in one of those dissonant modes, it usually sounds much nicer and prettier when moved to a relative mode that has a minor or a major chord as its tonic. As luck would have it, for the current song, it sounds really good when you move it to the relative mode of E mixolydian flat 6. So E mixolydian flat 6 is relative to C lydian augmented, as in there is the exact same scale, as in they contain the exact same notes, it's just that we treat E as the tonic for E mixolydian flat 6 and C as the tonic for C lydian augmented. It's just a different tonic. So in this case, E is the tonic and E is the home chord. The progression we get in E mixolydian flat 6 is major 1, minor 4, minor 5, flat 7, major sus 4, flat 7 major, and back to major 1, which is just major 3, minor 6, minor 7, major 2 sus 4, major 2, major 3, and Lydian augmented. But in practice, it's essentially just swapping that C augmented chord for an E major chord in that progression. Sometimes we can overanalyze things. <laughs> now to get to that E, I wrote a little turnaround, a little transition. Now it gets us where we want to go. We end up on that E major chord, which is cool. But let's use some modal interchange to smooth out a bit that transition and to land on that E with a little more gravitas. So what if, instead of that sharp five augmented, we used the five major, and instead of that sharp four diminished, we used the four major. As in we're borrowing the major five and the major four from C Ionian, as in plain vanilla C. I would probably see this as borrowing from G Mixolydian though, but that's just like splitting hairs. As in, if you sort of loop that riff. Treatment, it's all okay now. And even if you go to the C. Silent treatment, it's all okay. to resolve to G. But essentially what I want to demonstrate here is borrowing chords from a parallel mode. So we're going to call it borrowing from C Ionian. Silent treatment now I am. We land on that E really nice. That feels good. Now let's listen to the turnaround followed by our transformation into E mixolydian flat 6. The only note we needed to change of the melody was the last note because we can't really resolve on a C on an E major chord. That's a bit rough. Do you it's a bit rough. But if we change that C to a B, to Much nicer. Now here's what that sounds like. Silent I am. Soon you'll really recall that I am not with you. Certain modes are really unstable like this, but that's cool and that's part of their charms. And sometimes it's okay to just follow your desire for a nice, cozy, warm resolution. You know, sometimes you just gotta do what you want, do what I want. We 
went through rough terrain, but we ended up in a nice, cozy, warm, fat E manger. That's nice. So here's an arranged version with my Telecaster, my Fender Bass 6, my acoustic Taylor, and a really, really creepy Arturia CS80 patch that really digs into the creepiness of that augmented chord. I also bumped it up to G so that my voice would hit a different register. a fun mode. I mean, don't shy away from composing in those weird diminished or augmented modes. They could be really fun and could bring you new stuff, new things, new ideas, and new horizons to explore. Hope you liked it. See you in the next one. Jungle Ball.